What is 7 squared? We talked about the concept of squared. That means 7 times 7. And we all know that that means 49, right? 7 times 7 is 49. But also, also recall, what is negative 7 squared? What is negative 7 squared? Well, that's negative 7 times negative 7. The negative times negative makes positive, and the 7 squared still gives you the 49, so you still get a positive 49 back. So you see, this is important. If you take the positive 7 and square it, you get 49. If you take the negative 7 and you square it, you still get the positive 49. All right? So we're going to go backwards and say the opposite of squaring something is the square root of something. So if you take and put the symbol around 49, what you're asking yourself, here's the number under here, what times itself is going to give me 49. And you already know because I've written it down, the answer is 7. Um, so let's go ahead and write down the number 7. So the concept I'm trying to get across here is the concept of squaring something goes this direction, and the concept of taking the square root of something goes the other direction. When you take the square root of a number, you're trying to find out what number times itself will give you this number underneath the square root, also called the radical. So this is, this is called a radical. Okay? Now, the thing that to, to, to kind of make sure you understand is that when you take the number 49 in your calculator and hit the square root button, you're going to get the positive 7 back. This is called the principal root. Principal root. The principal root, the positive root, basically. But when you actually take the square root of 49, if you're looking for numbers that when they multiply by themselves, they give you 49, well, positive 7 multiplied by itself gives me 49, but negative 7 also multiplied by itself also gives me 49. So really, when you take the square root of a number, usually you're looking for the positive thing called the principal root, but really just keep in the back of your mind that negative 7 also works because negative 7 times negative 7 is also um, 49. So along those lines, I want to write down a few definitions for any number, we're going to call the number a, all right? We have a square root of a. When we take the square root of a, really what we're getting is plus or minus the square root of a. So we take the square root of the thing, but really the, the answer to whatever this is, you take the positive or the negative value of that, uh, when you get the answer, that's what those are the, the, the two answers that you can possibly get, much as we've kind of defined it up here. The positive answer is going to be what we call the principal root, and the negative answer is just another answer. Um, sometimes you use it, and sometimes you basically don't. So for instance, if you have, just putting numbers here, if you have um, the square root of 49, like we said, it's going to be plus or minus 7 because positive 7 times positive 7 is 49, and also negative 7 times negative 7 is also 49. So keep that in mind. Just another quick example. What if you had 81, and I wanted you to take the square root of 81, right? Well, 9 times 9 is 81, so we know that 9 is going to be the answer, but really there's two answers. One of them is the principal answer. Positive 9 times positive 9 gives you the 81, but negative 9 times negative 9 also works. So just keep in mind, when you slap a square root on something, like when you're solving an equation and you have to take the square root of it to get the answer, really there's really two possible things that satisfy to make the square root work. The positive value called the principal answer, and then the, the negative value is also there as well. All right. Um, we want to write down a couple more properties. Unfortunately, in this first lesson, we have to kind of get some properties out of the way. And then when we start cranking through a ton of problems, the properties will become second nature to you because you'll just use them all the time. So I want to write down a couple of properties that are important. Proper uh, property. The first one is actually pretty interesting. Let's say you take the square root of a number, we're calling it A, and then you take that answer that you get and you square it. What do you think you're going to get? Well, you're just going to get a back, right? So an example of this would be, take the square root of 36, and you take the answer, and you square it. What do you get on the inside here? Remember, you do whatever's on the inside of the parentheses first. What is the square root of 36? 6 times 6 gives you 36, right? So that the inside here, just the inside, is equal to 6. But we're squaring the answer, so we get back 36 again. So when you take the square root of something and then you square it, you square the answer, you get back your original thing. And basically, I'm going to write this down because it's important. 
uh, squares and square root are opposites. And that's going to be really important later on. Remember, back when you learn how to solve equations, we learned that we have to do the opposite thing, right? Opposite of addition is subtraction. Opposite of multiplication is division. Now you're learning another opposite. The opposite of squaring something is taking its square root, and the opposite of a square root of something is its square. So sometimes you'll need to take the square root of both sides of an equation, or whatever, and you'll need to know that, it, that the square is the opposite of the square root, and so on. And you can see that it's the opposite here, because if we do the square root first and then square it, we're basically undoing what we just did inside of here, and so we get this exact same thing back again. All right, we're going to go and do another property here, and then we're going to solve a ton of problems. And so the next property uh, is actually really, really important, and that is the square root of a times b, where a and b are numbers, just regular old numbers, positive numbers, uh, is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. And that's really important to understand. So let me just give you an example. So basically what we have is two numbers multiplied under the radical, under the square root. We can break this into its own square root and break this into its own square root and multiply them after the fact. So whether you multiply them underneath or multiply them separately, you're going to get the same answer either way is what that means. And let me give you an example here. Let's take a look at the square root of 16. Now, you already know that to find the square root of 16, you want to figure out what times what gives you 16. And you know that 4 times 4 gives you 16. It's a perfect square. So you know the answer is 4. But let's pretend that you didn't really know that. You did not know that the answer was 4. Inside this radical, 16 can be written as 4 times 4. You would agree with that, right? All I did was take the 16 and replace it with 4 times 4. Right? And this property is telling you that if I have things multiplied under a radical, I can break the radicals up. And I can make this square root of 4 times square root of 4. And by the way, I want to take this opportunity to show you. When I write my square roots, I always put a hook at the end. You see the hook here at the end? There's a hook here, a hook here, a hook here. A hook here, and a hook here. That tells me where my square root ends. If you don't put that hook there, and you start writing a lot of square roots all the time, you're going to get confused. Eventually, you're not going to know where your square root ends. So put a hook at the end of, of whatever number it is you have. Anyway, this can be broken into the square root of 4 times the square root of 4. Now you ask yourself, what is the square root of 4? 2 times 2 is 4. So that's going to be 2 times 2. The square root of 4 becomes this 2. The square root of this 4 becomes this 2, and they're multiplied together. What is 2 times 2? That is 4. So you see, you started with the square root of 16, and using this property, you figured out the answer is 4. And you already knew the answer was 4, because I picked a really, really simple problem to show you um, that. Um, but the bottom line is, that is one way in which you can evaluate these square roots, um, to break them up like this. Now, in reality, this isn't the easiest way to do it. I'm going to actually show you the easiest way to do it right now. I just wanted to introduce this property to you here. Um, what you're going to do when you solve most of these square root problems is you're going to create what you call uh, make a tree. We're going to make a square root tree. So what we're going to do first is resolve this problem here, um, just showing you how to do it. Let's say the square root of 16. Now what you want to do is make a tree. You want to say what times what gives you 16? What times what gives you 16? Now, you're looking for perfect squares if you can find them. So the first thing you notice is that you have 4 times 4, right? And that can give you 16. Now, as soon as you find a match, you can kind of stop going, and you can kind of circle these and say, well, I'm pulling out a pair, because this is a square root. Square is, involves the number 2, so you're really looking for pairs. So I found a pair of 4s. Now, when I find the pair of 4s, I pull it out. And I say that the answer is then equal to 4. So really all I have to do is write this tree, and I start multiplying things and trying to figure out and find pairs of, of numbers that multiply together to give me my top number. When I find a pair, I don't pull both of them out because it's a square root. I only pull one of them out. So I pull one of these 4s out, and that's going to be my final answer. So it's an alternative way of figuring out what the square root of a number is. All right, let's do another example. Uh, something that I know you know the answer to. 25. How do we find the square root of 25? Well, I need to multiply something times something to give me 25. 
First thing that pops into my head is 5 times 5. 5 times 5 I know is 25. And because this is a square root, I'm looking for pairs of numbers. And I see I have a pair right here, 5 and 5. So I can circle this. I don't pull both of them out. I'm, I'm only pulling one of the two out of the pair out. And that's going to be my final answer. There's nothing left to this problem. There are no other numbers in this tree. See, these are really small trees here in the beginning. So I'm going to make a tree. I'm looking for a pair. I pull one of them out. The answer is 5, and you know that that's true because 5 times 5 is 25. I'm choosing really, really simple problems here in the beginning to give you the hang of it. I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and we'll do a little bit of a quick review because in the next section we're going to do a ton of problems and make this a whole lot easier for you. Basically, we have the concept of squaring something to give us a number. The negative can also be squared to give us the same number. So when we take square roots, really what we're saying here is that there are two answers. There's the principal root, which is the positive answer, like positive 7. Then there's the negative 7 that works also. Same thing when we did the example of square root of 81. Plus or minus 9 can be used um, to, to, to multiply by itself to give you 81. And then we came up with a few properties. If you take a number, take its square root, and then square it, you just get the number back because squaring and square roots are opposite operations, just like addition and subtraction are opposites. And we'll use that fact a little bit later on. Then we introduced another property. That one was if you multiply things under a radical, you can break the radicals apart and multiply them afterwards, which helps you find the square root of, of items, which we, we did that here. We found that the square root of 16 was 4. But this is actually much, much easier. This is the way you're going to do it for your problems. You're going to make a factor tree. So you're looking for things to multiply together to give you 16 that are, and you're looking for pairs. So here we had a matching pair. We pull one of them out. The answer is 4. 25, 5 times 5 is 25. Found a matching pair. Pull one out. That's the answer. The reason we make these factor trees is when we want to find out what is the square root of something. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25 is 5. Now these are really simple problems because you know them from multiplication tables. Follow me on to the next lesson where I'm going to give you some more complicated square roots that you won't be able to just know just by looking at them. And you're going to use these factor trees to find out what the square roots equal to. And they'll be a little harder than these, so you'll understand the concept and why we're doing it and why it's fast. So make sure you understand this. Follow me on to the next lesson, and we'll conquer it right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.